Um, thank you. So, oh, that's quite loud. Uh, Jake Orlowitz, who's, who's an extrovert, he basically made a cold call to an organization called Turnitin and said, you guys have a cool tool, will you give it to us? And they said, we really like what you're doing, we'll be happy to. Um, so it's been a great collaboration between our movement and the for-profit company, Turnitin. And so we had access to Turnitin, we had this great idea, and we just needed a programmer to carry it out. And Back in Wikimania in London, um, I, we sort of had our plans all put together, and serendipitously, we met a woman by the name of Shani, and Shani says, I know this great programmer, and she grabbed this guy called Aaron, and we told Aaron the idea, and three hours later, we had the first version of our copy and paste detection bot. So it took three years, and then finally we found someone, and this tool came to life. The bot began generating results back in August of 2014, it initially just worked on medical content as we were trawling in that topic area. It's, of course, the topic area I'm most interested in. And then we expanded it to all of Wikipedia in January of 2015. Um, and initially it worked on templates. And basically, each copyright concern ended up as a template on a massive Wikipedia page. And these Wikipedia pages grow bigger and bigger and bigger as the bot adds more of these templates to it. And we realized that that is just not a sustainable solution going forwards, and we moved the back end of the bot to a database to allow greater flexibility and easier use of these uh, details. And then one of, another happy thing happened. Um, the community tech team was formed not that long ago. They were looking for ideas from the community to work on. Uh, we put forward our idea of this copy and paste detection bot because, well, the first version was useful, it was still quite clunky, and it needed more tech support, more tech development to bring it to um, um, a more usable level so that we can deal more uh, effectively with all these concerns. So the community tech uh, team joined us uh, a few months ago in developing this as well. So how big of an issue is plagiarism? Um, we have backlogs of contributor copyright violations that stretch back more than six years now. Uh, so these are known copyright uh, issues that still haven't been dealt with. Um, these are users who have made large numbers of copyright violations and basically people need to systematically go through their history once they're detected and review every edit they've ever made. So it's a s slow process. Um, Sort of what got me involved is, is I came across one user who was working in, the, in sort of the, um, the species of malaria topic area, and they managed to make 20,000 edits over eight years, which most of them were copyright violations from the very beginning, without anybody noticing them because they work in a niche area. <clears throat> so there are even more egregious cases than that that other people have come across. So how does the bot work? So I'm not a programmer. On the fundamental level, basically what the bot does is when someone makes a new edit to Wikipedia, if that edit is over a certain size, the bot goes in and it cuts out the block of text, new text that was added to Wikipedia. It sends that block of text to Turnitin's API. And who, who here has heard of Turnitin? So, few in the crowd. So Turnitin basically is um, uh, a for-profit copy and paste detection tool that's used by universities and schools and publishers to help prevent um, uh, students from handing in papers that are plagiarism. Uh, they're used by thousands of schools around the world, um, and they've developed, you know, this is their niche area, they've developed some very effective tools for picking up copyright issues. Um, so getting back to the tool, the first thing it does is it copies, it, it cuts out the block of text that's, of, uh, you know, that's over a certain size, it ships that block of text to turn it in, Turn and looks at the block of text and it says, is there anything previously that's been published that contains uh, similar details to this? And if the text looks concerning, then it returns the bot a positive result and we add the details of that edit to a list for human beings to follow up on. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, the bot typically works within about 10 minutes of the edit being made. This is essential, you know, you can't apply this retrospectively to edits that happen to Wikipedia 
a year ago or even a month ago, as Wikipedia is so extensively mirrored across the internet, that false positives begin to build up so quickly um, uh, from people just, you know, copying our content without attribution. So it really needs that, you know, we really need to, you know, look at edits relatively quickly after that they're made. And a few of the results. Um, our bot is looking at about 1,400 edits on the English Wikipedia per day. Uh, about 10% of these, the bot flags as concerns, so about 140 edits are being flagged as concerns per day. And then human beings go through these edits and they, you know, to look at them more closely, determine whether or not they're true positive or false positives. And the bots write about 60% of the time. Um, so we're getting about 80 true positive um, concerns per day, which is equivalent to 2,400 um, copyright violations needing to be reverted and well, picked up and then being reverted because of this tool. So what can create false positives? Um, there's a few reasons false positives occur. You know, there are some mirrors that are amazingly quick. Um, you know, some of our content is mirrored within, you know, minutes of that new text being added. Um, one of the things we're doing to try to address this is we're building a white list of uh, websites that we know are simply mirroring Wikipedia content. And other websites that go on this white list include those we know uh, only contain content under an open license. So, for example, we recently put UNESCO on this list as, you know, we have a partnership with UNESCO right now and UNESCO is releasing content uh, under a has released content under an open license so we can uh, add it to Wikipedia. Um, and then, of course, as we build and improve this whitelist of sites we know aren't of concern, the functioning of our bot has improved gradually over time. So probably when it first started out, it was only 40% accurate, and now we're seeing a, a rise in accuracy uh, of this tool over time. So unfortunately, this is a little bit small, but here is um, um, a quick look at, at, at the older version of our tool. Um, so a few aspects, uh, let me see if I have my little, um, so what we see here is we see, he, here's basically one item of concern. What we see is we see there's the article name, beside it is basically the, the diff of the edit, beside that is the, the history of the article, and we see the editor who made the article, and then we see what source uh, it, it is concerning that this uh, edit was similar to. And then when you click on the compare button, up will pop a box that will compare the new addition to Wikipedia side by side with um, that URL, that text source. And then there's ability for, the, for um, uh, those doing the follow-up to provide feedback. And we basically have uh, a true positive, that means it's a copy violation, and a false positive button. We have the date that was made. Uh, and then once that button's hit, um, that item line is then hidden. So, um, one of the other good features of this project is we also tag each of the articles by their wiki project. So some people are just interested in working on one topic area of content, and we have developed this tool such that you can search um, the concerning edits by your topic area of interest or by your wiki project of interest. So if you're interested in wiki project military history, you can just look at the copy violations that occur within uh, wiki project military history. <clears throat> um, and there's a little script you need to add to add that ability, but our new tool, uh, which I'm gonna show you next, that has just come out in the last few days, Here's um, sort of, you know, you can select which wiki project you want to look at. Um, you can scroll down and, and select more if you wish. So now um, there's a more detailed view, which I should have showed initially. Um, and then here's what happens when you click on um, uh, one of the compare buttons. So there's two different compare buttons. Uh, we have reports by Turnitin, and this is the report that Turnitin gives us. So basically, it highlights all, um, when you click on the, the, the Turnitin button, it, it highlights all the text which it deems is word for word from another source, and then it tells you how similar it is to that source, and it tells you what that source is. So it makes follow-up um, much simpler for determining issues. And then here's the other version of the, of the um, um, sort of compare tool that works in a slightly different way. This is uh, eWig's copy vial de uh, detector. We basically added that to our Turnitin tool. 
uh, so that you, when you click on the compare button, you get, this, you get a similar thing where you get the, the concerning text in red, the percent violation, and then there'd be more concerning text in red on that side. So, as I mentioned, um, you know, accuracy is right around 63%. Uh, a number of reasons for false positives. Sometimes, you know, peop, you know uh, if someone puts in a large quote, that will come back as a copyright um, concern. The, the machine's not able to detect at this point in time whether there's quotation marks around the text in question. Um, addition of tables and lists also flag as true pause or flag as concerns. We're not quite sure why. This is hopefully something that we'll address over the coming months. Um, and then if someone moves material around within the article, it can think it's a new edition of text rather than text just moved within that Wikipedia article, and that can flag as a, as a false positive too. Um, often when people take a chunk of text from one article, and they, or they take a big article and they try to uh, split it into smaller articles, that also is flagged as a concern. So it's really helpful if community members who are, who are splitting articles mention in their edit summary which article that text really originally came from. And actually to, call, to, to fulfill our CC BYSA license, you do need to attribute when you move text within Wikipedia where you got that text originally from. Um, so here's a graph looking at the number of issues picked up since um, you know, between July 15th and May 19th. Um, so over almost a year, this bot has flagged about 11,000 uh, concerns. And we see that you know, the number of concerns picked up uh, from August of 2015 to May of 2016 has increased. The reason for this increase isn't that you know, more people are making more edits to Wikipedia. It's not that more plagiarism is occurring. The increase has to do with the increased stability of the bot. When the bot was initially constructed, it would go down on a regular basis. And now uh, we have our bot consistently up so, so that it's, it's um, basically working more and picking up more concerns because it's looking at more edits. Um, so some of the stuff, we've actually addressed many of these issues. These were issues with the previous bot. Um, there's, no, there's no auto archiving system, so we're working on developing one of those. Um, and it doesn't always update itself when issues are taken care of through other method, methods. So for example, if someone else takes care of um, um, the copyright violation, there's no, we don't have a mechanism in place yet that feeds back to the bot saying, this concern has already been taken, of, taken care of and removing it from the list. Uh, just, so the next person doesn't need to take a look at it a second time. So now one very exciting thing, and this just rolled out a few weeks ago slash. Um, yes, so it's also changed its name. Um, uh, and it's also changed its URL. And uh, if you click on this URL, it will read this old URL, it will redirect you to the new URL. Um, it used to be called uh, a plagio bot. It's now called uh, copy patrol and this is the new version uh, that just came out in the last few weeks and we're encouraging people to go and take a look at it and you know play around with it um, and you know it's a similar setup to what we had before this here bot lives on 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 tool labs rather than living on Wikipedia so the prior details lived on Wikipedia the, the current bot now lives on tool labs um, and we see a similar layout we see the name of the page we see a button for the diff and when that diff occurs. Um, we're still working on getting the editor um, uh, to show up reliably. Here we see the editor who made that edit. And one of the wonderful features we have in addition now is it will tell us how many edits that user has made. So typically most copy and paste concerns come from people who've made a few, num a few edits, you know, a couple dozen. Um, if someone has made thousands of edits, most of the time um, uh, the flag concern is a false positive. But occasionally, you know, even long-term editors slip up, um, you know, they don't pa paraphrase sufficiently and, you know, even long-term editors occasionally need a reminder to paraphrase more extensively. And then we have our list of wiki projects and then we have our, our, our buttons that, that feed back to the database. And this here, you can mark the page as you basically dealt with the issue or no action was needed because it was, it was a false positive. And then we have our, our, uh, our Turnitin report here, and then we have our eWig tool, eWig compare tool right beside it. Now when you click um, the eWig compare tool, one of the nice features that 
has just rolled out is that it will now show you, rather than opening a new tab, it will show you the compare right within that tool, side by side in a drop down menu. Here, um, I was, here is, is sort of what the drop down menu looks like. Um, uh, there's a live version of this now, just in the last few days. Um, and then the ability to sort by, by wiki project, you can put in what wiki project you want in this tool as well. So, yeah, so, you know, what are the benefits of this tool? So, the big benefits of this tool, it, it allows one to catch problems early. You know, it prevents people from, um, you know, we're not sure whether this picks up all copyright violations, but it will definitely, you know, if someone has an issue with, with um, copy and pasting, and they make hundreds of edits, this will catch them eventually, and it will allow us to hopefully um, inform them of how copyright works, hopefully get them to change, before they have, you know, sort of spent thousands of hours making hundreds of, or thousands of concerning edits for the rest of the community to pick up. Um, it also reduces uh, Wikipedia's exposure to copyright problems. You know, one of the frustrating things as a long-term editor, you know, we're all here trying to contribute to this amazing project because the project's open. But if we are allowing copyright concerns to build up, really only, you know, 95% of Wikipedia is truly open. The other 5% that represents copyright concerns, then we say it's open, but it's not really, and exposes both you know, Wikipedia to legal liability, and then it exposes our users to liability as well. So we need to make sure we do everything we can to prevent that. So, you know, some users persistently have issues with copyright. They're not able to figure it out. So, you know, there are a few administrators who are working with, with uh, uh, the people doing the follow-up, and some users do need to have their editing privileges removed. One of the interesting things that we're seeing, um, and this tool is actually helping us address a second one of the key issues I see facing um, our movement, is this tool picks up a great deal of paid promotional editing. Uh, a lot of paid promotional editors are lazy. They just wish to make quick money. And what they do is basically, you know, they put their profile up on Elance, um, offering to write pages for someone, a company comes along and says, hey, you know, um, uh, we'll give you $500 or whatever, here's our press releases, here's our website, please create a Wikipedia page for us. And the paid promotional editor often frequently just copies and pastes, pastes from the press release and from the website into Wikipedia, hits the save button, and then you know, you come along, you see it, it's obvious copyright violation, you delete it, and then you end up with the, all these emails saying, hey, I had permission to use this. Um, and then it goes from being one issue, which is copyright violation, to two issues, which is copyright violation and conflict of interest. Um, so, I'm... Um, so, currently, as I said, uh, it's covering all of English Wikipedia. Uh, one of the bottlenecks we're experiencing is that we just have a small community doing the follow-up. Uh, so there's really only a couple of, of core editors. We're really needing more help in, in you know, doing the follow-up of the concerning edits and, and cleaning up the issues that we see. Uh, one of the things we're hoping to develop to, to hopefully increase the outreach for this tool is create boxes of content um, by wiki project and then paste, putting those boxes um, um, on each wiki project which is then automatically updated and lists the copyright concerns that occur in that wiki project so when people go to wiki project pages and they're looking for something to do this will appear on that page as one of the possible activities they can get involved in. And then, you know, so, so Turnitin works in a whole bunch of languages. Currently the bot uh, is only functioning on English Wikipedia. We would like to see it expand to um, other language versions of Wikipedia. There was a trial of the Turnitin bot on Hebrew. Uh, the issue is that the um, um, Turnitin did not have sufficient Hebrew sources to make the bot very effective. Uh, but I would imagine for larger languages like French, Spanish, Italian, German, Dutch, Turnitin's database of sources would be much larger and this bot would uh, likely be uh, beneficial for those communities. Um, the other bit of, of plagiarism that this tool will not pick up is it won't pick up uh, translation plagiarism. So if someone was to translate from English 
into French and then copy and paste that material into the French Wikipedia, this tool won't pick that up. Um, that's not so much of an issue for the English Wikipedia, but it might definitely be an issue for, for other languages of Wikipedia. So in that sense, this likely wouldn't pick up um, the same proportion of copyright concerns uh, if it was running on German or if it was running on Spanish. Um, English Wiki Voyage is currently in the trial phase of this project or of this uh, tool. Great, so um, I'd like to leave some time for questions. Um, I think we have another like five, ten minutes for, for, for questions from the audience. Um, yeah. In the back. Yeah, so, um, so some of the people who are doing the follow-up will then, then hide those revisions. Um, they'll, they'll use oversight tools to oversight that content. Um, but you need to be an administrator to do it. I personally don't think that's completely essential. I think it's most important for that material to be removed with an edit summary that says, simply says copyright violation you know, so that if it's, it reoccurs, then, then, then a, you know, an admin can deal with it at that point in time. But, um, yeah. Can this bot be used on commons one day? That is an excellent question. Um, I think it would be very useful for us to develop a, a copyright detection bot for commons. I think it would work differently than this. Um, you know, Turnitin is a real text-based um, uh, copyright detection tool. Something like Google Images, one could create a copy detection tool with Google Images. Yeah. I can reply to that real quick just because uh, some people have actually looked into building such a tool. The main reason nothing has been built is because all of the API services for detecting image copyright violations are commercial. Um, and so we would have to have some kind of funding in order to build that just for the API service. Or we'd need to find some nice company who's willing to donate us their API for free. Um, so basically all published, you know, most published journals are in there. They, um, many, many textbooks are in there. They have um, uh, student papers, all of Wikipedia, um, and they've done a fairly extensive scrape of the web. Um, you know, they have great coverage for healthcare and the reliable sources within, within medicine and healthcare, but they also pick up a whole range of other stuff. So, you know, a lot of the copyright violation that we're picking up is, um, you know, non-notable schools. Uh, and it's basically people copying from the school's website into Wikipedia. For, yeah, newspapers are in there as well. So, you know, we see newspapers being copied from, we see textbooks being copied from, we see journal articles being copied from, and we see the web being copied from. We're, we're seeing a broad range of, of sources being copied from, which means that Turnitin has a broad range of sources within it. Yes. Um, I would imagine so. Do you, any further words? Can you repeat the question? So, okay, so the question was, uh, let's say Turnitin turned around one day and said, you can no longer use our API. What would we do at that point? Is there another source, um, uh, another tool we could use to keep this bot up and running? Um, so yeah, there are plenty of other APIs which are obviously paid and um, um, yeah, commercial APIs that we can use. Uh, Google's API is one of those, and it is considerably better than Turnitin, of course, for a lot of other, um, um, you know, genres of articles. Like, for example, I don't imagine Turnitin would pick up a copyright violation edit on, say, Taylor Swift's article, but Google would do that much more effectively. Um, yeah, and so we can do that, but yeah, of course, we need funding, more money. Yeah. And you know. With respect to the accuracy of Google versus Turnitin, 
it would be interesting to do an experiment to see if there is a significant difference um, in accuracy between those two sites. And if there is, should we be running both or, you know, should we be running one on some types of content, running the other on other types of content? But I think, you know, there's, there's potential to do a great, a lot more research to see whether or not um, uh, different APIs would give us better results than what we're, we're getting right now. Um, so, do we, so the question is, you know, if for the false positives, for, for you know, the things that are bot flags that aren't actually um, copyright violations because Turnitin made a mistake, do we report it? Um, you know, the mistakes occur to, due to a few issues. One is often that someone's moving text around Wikipedia or that the source, is, uh, the source of the information is already under an open license and the person was allowed to copy it into Wikipedia, or that the person put quotation marks around the information in question, so it's not actually a copyright violation. But um, th those are the main false positives we're seeing, and there's not much, you know, there's a few things more we could do about it, but yeah. So is there interest to see this tool running in, in further languages? You know, for those from the German, the, the French, the Spanish languages, would you, would you guys find this tool useful? That's, that's a good question, you know, I'm not sure if this tool is detecting, you know, it's detecting a huge amount of copyright concerns. I don't know what percentage it's missing. So we know what percentage, you know, it's over calling, but we don't know what percentage it's under calling. Um, and that would be an interesting question to, you know, determine the answer to that and see if there's some certain section that it's under calling and why it's under calling those and why it's missing some copyright violations that are going into Wikipedia. Another question. You mentioned that uh, it was like uh, um, some of the came out were um, uh, tagging paid editing. Is that because paid editing includes uh, copy-pasting sources more often? Yes. So, so my hypothesis is that pay editors are copy and pasting more frequently than non-paid editors. Um, yes, yeah, because you know they they feel that they have permission to use this content because the person paying them has said, "Here's our press release. Here's our website. Please make us a Wikipedia page," um, and they want to do it as quickly as possible so they can collect their money and move on to their next job um, because it's basically piecemeal work and they're getting paid per Wikipedia article is the usual payment format for paid editing rather than pay per hour. Um, so the Could you maybe uh, extend uh, the use of this bot to detect potential paid editing? That would be interesting. Exactly. You know, we're, we, we're working with the, the artificial intelligence group and, and we're, we're generating this, this database and we're hoping that you know, this database will be useful for some of the AI tools that are looking at editing generally. Um, Killer, you want to comment further on that? Um, yeah, if you guys don't already know about it, the ORES project is uh, an artificial intelligence engine that analyzes edits to see like how likely they are to be helpful edits versus unhelpful edits. Um, and so the, the data that we're generating through this, um, I haven't actually talked to Aaron about it yet, but I don't know if, have you, have you talked to Aaron at all about it? Uh, I'll, I'll Aaron. So, so Aaron Hapiger is, is, is the gentleman working on uh, a lot of the AI stuff. And you know, so he's excited about the data we're generating. You know, with AI tools, the first thing you need is you need good databases that say, this here is copyright violations, this here is not copyright violations, this here is paid editing. Um, and, then, and then you can teach the AI engine, from my understanding, uh, how to separate these different types of edits. And then the AI engine can then look at future edits and flag them as potentially concerning um, for, for future human follow-ups. So, so we're hoping that the, gener the data that we're generating through this tool will then help uh, AI tools become smarter um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, 
AI tools? I think I have time for one more question, and then um, if there are any more, and then we'll, the next speaker will begin. Yes. Yeah, um, me as a non-tech person, I, I've never asked them those questions. Um, I would imagine that you know this is sort of their secret sauce. Um, this is their proprietary business, um, and while they're more than happy to help us and give us, you know, they've given us a million uses of their API, um, and they'll likely give us more once we use all of that. Um, yeah, but they've been a good partner with, with with respect to what we want to do, with respect to us looking into. I don't have much, in, you know, yeah, not much interest into that. But who's speaking next? Ah, Amir, perfect.